Hi, welcome to the Union Pacific Steam Shop in Cheyenne, Wyoming. This is our summer 2020 steam shop tour. We're gonna to talk about all the exciting things we do here in this 100 year old building. One of the few places that you can see actual behind the scenes work on a big boy, the only place you can see big boy work. When you walk into a shop like this, the first thing that is impresses people is just the sheer size of it. The architecture of this old building, all the steel trusses, and just the sheer size of this. So think about what this shop was back during the steam locomotive era. This particular part of the shop is known as the heavy machinery bay. As that name implies, this is where all the heavy duty machines are. This is where everything, all the big tooling, all the big lays, the mills, the presses, all of the big heavy duty machines that you need to rebuild any steam locomotive, this is where it is here. We've taken a lot of these machines and we've rebuilt them, we've cleaned them up, we've fixed them up, we've made them so they can turn accurate dimensions, cut accurate tapers, cut accurate threads, and design things so they can really do what we need to do because we do all the work here in house. We outsource only the things that we really need to, the big heavy duty uh, the tires, for example, turning a big diameter wheel, something like that. So as we walk through, you can see a vertical turret lathe, a big heavy duty item. We recently built many bushings for the side rods on this locomotive. We also turned our piston rings and our valve rings on that. Over here, we've got a really unique 1940s turret lathe. And this was the 1940s production machine. We set this up primarily to, to roll threads, to roll our stay bolt threads. So we, we completely disassembled this machine and rebuilt it, painted it, fixed it up, bought a quick, quick change tool post, thread roller, a turning box, all the things that we need to go into production to make the threads. So a lot of people understand what a steam locomotive is. For those that aren't that familiar with what a steam locomotive is, I'm gonna talk about those component parts. We talk about stay bolts, we talk about nuts and bolts and rivets and all the different parts of a big steam locomotive. Well, locomotive fireboxes are put together with what are known as a stay bolt. As that name implies, it stays or holds the heat transfer surfaces of the inside part of that pressure vessel. Well, these particular components, they're threaded in. So they have what is known as a common lead. So the bolt threads in one sheet, goes through a water space and threads into the other sheet. Well, we manufacture our stay bolts by rolling or forming the thread and that gives us a really good high quality thread. When you cut anything, for example, if you were to look at that, that bolt under magnification, you could see some small tears as that cutting tool is physically cutting and removing the body of material that creates that, that thread. By rolling it, you're forming it and that reduces that tearing effect and therefore it reduces how that bolt could potentially fail in the years that it's in service. So it's just one of the things that the railroads did back in the days when they were in, uh, involved in this type of operation. So this machine here uh, was in with heavy use just uh, a little over a year and a half ago when we were getting ready to, to get the big boy advancing it through its two and a half year restoration. Over here, we've got other machines that we use, band saws, custom tables for fabrication that we can set up fixtures. Uh, we're making water glasses and all the different individual pieces that we have, the multiple process as we machine each one of these components inside and out. Very intricate double lead thread. It's just a lot of multiple steps here. Those are new bronze castings. And this is something that looks a little bit out of place because these machines, these machines are modern, the modern day. If you were to go to a modern machine shop, you'd see computer controlled machines. And that's what we have back here. So we've invested in the machining capability that allows us to do the work that we need to do to control the quality aspects of all the different components that we have on the locomotive. Both these machines were a flurry of activity back when we were in heavy production. There's a drawing on the wall of part of the engine truck centering device mechanism. We had to make some pretty critical adjustments. When we brought the locomotive back from California, 
those front four wheels were not tracking accurately. So through the process of rebuilding the locomotive, we took everything apart and made all the necessary adjustments and machined it according to the new drawing. Over here we have a lathe that we can mass produce all types of components. Firing valve was made here, water glass components, all the tapered fit bolts for the crosshead guides, uh, countless other studs, and nuts and bolts, just countless custom material for the locomotive is all machined here. So the machine is computer controlled, but it's manually programmed. So we write the program specific to the part that we're going to make. These machines do best when you're mass producing. That's what they're designed for, but we, we've also used them to make a one-off component. We have the skill and the talent that we could make these pieces manually on some of the manual machines out there, but these, these machines give us a really good quality and very rapid ability to produce the items that we're making. A comparator, overhead crane, everything that we need to move heavy equipment, We've got these doors that we can open up so we can bring big heavy equipment in here. We can use the crane and position the equipment on either machine. So it's just a really versatile way to get our production. There's some gaskets here. These are for the exhaust steam injector. And back in the days of steam locomotive actual operation, these would have been laminated with an asbestos. So what we've done is we designed a program so it has created almost an embossed impression of the raised areas. And this is annealed, so this copper is softened, and as it's placed in service, those areas begin to crush, and that creates the desired gasket sealing effect that we need to make sure that exhaust steam injector works. And that's the, the advantage of having a, a computerized production machine is that we can produce several spare parts. We've got heavy duty bead blasters, two different types of grit, so we can disassemble components and we can clean them up very accurately. We've got a heavy duty grit, and then we've got a finer grit for air brake components and valves and other things of that nature. So we're not uh, abrading the components uh, when, we, when we clean everything up. Well, we're in the erection bay of the big shop, and one of the things that, that we just recently installed just a few years ago was a new overhead lifting capacity, a big overhead crane, a five ton auxiliary hook and a 40 ton big hook. This enables us to move things around, to do what we need to do, pick up big giant components. We use this crane and some jacks to pick up the, the front engine bed when we were working on that locomotive. You can handle all this material in here, all these main rods and all the different connecting rods and all these big parts very efficiently with a very limited amount of actual effort. These, these components are very heavy. It just gives you a sense of the scale of the big boy locomotive and just how big these parts are. So as you can see, this is the rod scope project and we will assemble all of these connecting rods and get everything put back together again. You see a lot of our, our connecting rod bushings over there. We've got one new wrist pin that we'll replace and lots of new wrist pin hardware, all new hardware, new rod hardware. Uh, nuts, bolts, cotter pins, all of that, consumable items. And here we've got the, the 4014's tender, and we're working on some spring rigging and just doing the work that we need to do to bring the locomotive up to standard. Air brake work, uh, heavy duty work, uh, making all new cylinder levers, all new brake truck levers, and all the components over here. We've got some of the components that we've made, uh, safety hangers, making the push rod rollers. For those of you that are familiar with a modern locomotive, you'll see these clevises. This is a modern day clevis that you'll see on a locomotive. Well, on the big boy locomotive, just like on the 844 when we rebuilt that a few years ago, it has similar components. The issue is, is they're very old. They've been well built up and they're old and they're tired. So we re renew all this, all new pins and bushings, everything that we need to do to bring the locomotive up to standard. So it's, it's really actually quite enjoyable when you disassemble a component down to its uh, component pieces. It's really enjoyable to take it and see it come back together again with new parts. 
when you think about what a locomotive does, how it operates, what it does when it's operating, rolling down the track and all these intricate pieces, it's a lot of vibration, a lot of forces, the thrust forces of the cylinder, the piston, the inertia forces of the RPM, the reciprocating energy, that force, tremendous powerful forces. So all of this stuff needs to be assembled very, very meticulously. Having good new components and good hardware assures that we get the serviceability that we need and the safety quality that we have. We're gonna walk up on the ramp here and you can see some of the modifications that we've made to the ramp to allow us to do the work. So we've cut back some of these ramps and that allows us to bring the overhead crane over and to access this side of the locomotive and do the work. Got big heavy draw bars here. Steam hose that we use when we steam, when we clean up. Uh, we, we just went through some annual inspections. So we've got all the steam hoses and using for water and for heating the water. This is the 844's tender. And this is a view that is a view that you don't get to see every day. So we're up on our elevated inspection platform and we get a really good look of the big boy, just how big the locomotive is. And the work that we have is always ongoing. There's inspections, there's servicing, there's routine servicing, there's adjustments that we're making. We're making some improvements here and there. Uh, we're also continuing just to do just the maintenance. A steam locomotive is designed as a big, massive, portable power plant. But when you let a steam locomotive sit, that's when the water begins to deteriorate certain components. So how you store a locomotive is just as important as how you run it. And that's what we've done. So when we store these locomotives, we do not have any water in the boiler. We do not have water in the tender. And all of these parts, those parts that are susceptible to corrosion are very carefully cleaned and then dried out. We actually keep heating units inside both fireboxes and the smoke box to drive out any presence of any moisture. Just the atmospheric oxygen will oxygenate any, any quantity of, of moisture and sustain that corrosion cycle. So that's what we want to do when we keep these locomotives keep them stored for long periods when they're not being operated We make sure that we store them carefully. Air brake components, all types of little intricate pieces of the locomotive have all kinds of little crevices and cavities that could, can hold water. Or even uh, another form of lubricant that may be deteriorating, that's maybe contaminated. So you go through and you do the annual inspections and all of those checks, we call that COTNS, Clean Oil Test and Stencil. So that's another part of the regulatory and the UP standard part of the work that we do here. So just a lot of ongoing work on the locomotives, adjusting, making better, doing what we need to do. This locomotive, you can see that it, now it has a little bit of weathering. We've got 9,000 miles, a little over 9,000 miles on the locomotive. And so it's showing that wear. Steam locomotive operates with fuel and water. So that water, that steam, that condensate, as it flows out of all the different parts, it carries with it all kinds of impurities from the water that was in the water that concentrates in the boiler. So that's just part of any steam locomotive operation is managing the water treatment aspect of it, managing the power aspect of that water. And that was a big logistical challenge back during the days of steam locomotive operation. And that hasn't changed today. That continues to be a logistical uh, element of what we have to do to maintain these big locomotives. You can see the exhaust steam injector here. We've got insulation got the regulating wheel drive shaft and all the little different pieces. Things are tagged uh, based on its, its uh, level of inspection, uh, what remains, what was loosened, what needs to be tightened, uh, what was disassembled. You know, all the things that when you've got a big machine like this, there's so many moving parts. Terminal checks, all the different pieces that we have to keep all this stuff up and running. All of it was new, brand new main reservoirs, all new running boards, just a tremendous, tremendous reassembly process. As I walk along here, it's, it's kind of starts flooding back in my memory, all the different pieces, everything that was done to bring this locomotive back and to put it back into service. You can see some of the oil 
kind of oozing out here and that's just a lubricant on the washout plug and you see all the different work that's 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 happened all the insulation here's a really good shot of the trailing truck and the new lube lines that's a kevlar insulation that you see there a rebuilt brake cylinder all new pins and bushings as i mentioned when we were talking over in the erection bay and the cab and the running, uh, the running board and the frame cab and everything was all brand new. And you can see all the beautiful light straight rivet lines and just a tremendous work. And a lot of really fascinating pieces that people don't get to see every day. And that's all the work that's underneath the cab. All the different air brake components, all the pipes, the fuel piping, the air brake piping, uh, just a tremendous, work of art the workmanship and the speed at which everything came together you can see the bronze firing valve there and the fuel line and the beautiful steam fitting there is uh, there is an art to steam locomotive work all all workmanship is is craftsmanship and skill when you work on a big component like this you develop a sense of appreciation for how it was designed so when we put it back together again, we, we want to preserve that because that's the best way to rebuild the locomotive. To not replumb it with a bunch of fittings screwed together that you bought from the hardware store, but to take and recreate the piping, the graceful flow of the bend of all the different piping. You can see this piping is all new piping. And some of it, you can see it's got 9,000 miles worth of grease and weathering on it. But all of this is all built custom, just the way it was. Locomotive, as it's traveling down the track, is vibrating. Uh, these components expand and contract as the locomotive is hot versus cold. Uh, some components flow uh, liquid water. Some flow steam and condensate, air, fuel, steam, all the different items, all the different uh, volumes of liquids and gases that flow through these components they have to move. So the rigidity is important, but it's not locked down. It's, it allows some flexibility. And that too is part of the original design. The graceful sweeping arches of these long bins are designed to allow that to kind of move and flex just enough combined with all the other uh, features of the, that run of pipe. So it's, it's, uh, it's a real appreciation that you have when this is all put back together again. The benefit of putting it back together from the ground up is that everybody knows the locomotive intimately. Everybody knows all the, the, the parts and pieces, the nomenclature. So when we talk about it in a technical sense, when we have an inspection requirement, or we have an adjustment to make, or we need to work on something, everybody understands what it is and how it works because our hands were on it during all aspects of disassembly and then putting it back together again. So just a tremendous amount of workmanship and pride. So you are looking at the world's largest steam locomotive rebuilt here in the steam shop in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And with that, I would like to conclude this tour and thank everybody for the support that we've enjoyed over the years of the rebuild of the 844 and the rebuild of this locomotive. And if you are not, a member of Facebook, we encourage you to go to our Steam Club Facebook page and join. That's where we have all of our most current information and any updates that we are going to present, such as these. Those will be released there first. And so if you're interested in steam locomotives and you want to see what's going on in the Cheyenne Steam Shop, please consider being a member of our Facebook Steam Club page. So thank you very much for your support. We appreciate you watching these videos.